B. I am so excited to be here with you on this holy week. Listen, there's so much to unpack. There's so much to thank God for. And I just need to know, all of you who are out there this morning, are you thankful? I need you to go ahead and drop a comment in the section right now and let me know that you are thankful and grateful this week. And you may say, Pastor, what are you? What, what am I thankful for? Listen, you are still here. You are thankful that God woke you up to see another day. You are thankful that you are on another journey of your life. Come on, this is another chapter. Yesterday is gone, but today is a new day. I want you all to start sharing this message, inviting somebody to join us on this Winning Wednesday. Listen, this is a special edition of this Win Winning Wednesday. This is Holy Week. There's so much for us to unpack and to think about all that happened in our history of why we celebrate this week as we think about um, what Christ did from Palm Sunday all the way to Resurrection Sunday. I need to talk to some of my resurrected folks out there this morning. Are you resurrected? I need you to go ahead and drop a comment to let me know that you are resurrected. Resurrection is, is that you were once dead in sin, but now you are no longer in sin. Do I have any resurrection people out there this morning? If that's you, come on, drop a comment section in real quick and just let me know that you are resurrected. My Christ died for me. My Lord raised again on the third day for me. Any resurrected folks out there, just go ahead and drop a comment. I want you to go ahead and now start sharing this message, inviting somebody to be on. Listen, I need you to be some some soul winners out there today. This is Winning Wednesday. And as we're inviting those to be a part of our weekly services, I need you to invite somebody to be a part of this Winning Wednesday. I believe that as we come together, there's more that we can do together than we can do apart. And as I share this message on this Holy Week, I want you to go and now invite somebody else to be a part. And uh, I see you, Diane, this morning. Come on, you are resurrected. Come on, Billy, I see you this morning. You are resurrected. Listen, let's take a few moments and let's invite somebody to be a part of this special edition on the Holy Week of this Winning Wednesday. I'm so excited about um, what God is doing. I was, on the phone, I was having a conversation this morning and I was telling um, um, the person who I was talking to, I said, that, do you know how blessed you are? And, you know, that thing, it, it, it stuck with me for a moment because I'm saying to, to them that as you realize how blessed you are for the things that you have, sometimes we're looking at our blessings through different lenses. Sometimes we're looking for substance as our blessing. Sometimes we're looking for full manifestation as our blessing. But let me tell you, when you're looking through the lenses of God and you see that what you had is more than what you have, then you're saying that, God, I can understand that I am blessed. When you start changing your focus, changing your outlook, changing how you see things, changing how you feel about things, I want you not to not look at what you have, but look at the things that you have. And God is trying to get us to understand that there is more that he has in store for us. There's more that he wants to give us, but let's change the focal point of how we look and see things are going to be done in our life. Listen, I want to just give you something this morning. This is Resurrection Hope. This is Resurrection Week as we take our thoughts, our minds, our actions to know that what God has did for us, how he has brought us, how he has kept us, how he will use us. And let me ask you this question. Are you going to be a vessel that God is going to use this week? Are you going to be the vessel that God is going to cause that as we understand that what he did for us, how he raised himself from the dead, how he continued to be that light of hope and, and throughout our entire lives. There's so much that we have to understand that this week on Holy Week, Resurrection Sunday, that I encourage all of you to bring somebody, invite somebody, and to allow them to be a part of this service. Listen, you are all the vessels that God wants to use. The only reason he's not using you is because you're not allowing yourself to be used. Stop making excuses. Stop sitting on the sideline, but let's go forth and let God know that, Lord, I want to be used. I want each and every one of you, whatever church you're in, if you're in our local body, I want you to bring three people to church with you on Sunday. When we talk about the gospel, it's saying it's good news, but let me let me share something with you. If it's good, you tell somebody about it. When you find a good deal, something on sale, you start talking about it. You let other people know. But let me ask you this. It's the gospel, if your salvation, if Christ has been good to you, 
I need you to go tell two or three people and bring them on this journey with you. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 40 and 31, he said that they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings of eagles. They shall walk and not get weary. They shall run and not faint. We got to remember something that Jesus ministry started when he was in the wilderness for 40 days. And in 40 days, he had his encounter where he was tempted. He was tried. I mean, you read in Matthew, the fourth chapter, and you'll see that was Satan tempted him with so many different vices, but he stood the test of time and he did not waver in his faith and his belief because he knew who he was. And I want you to know today, do you really know who you are? Do you really know who you are in God? You're sitting on the sideline, you're sitting and you're saying that I don't know who I am. I don't know my purpose, but let me tell you, sometimes you need to go into that wilderness moment. You need to close your mouth, close your uh, phones down. I mean, shut it down and allow God to minister to you. And you'll see that here um, in Matthew, the fourth chapter, Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 As he was in the wilderness, you'll find out that um, he was in the wilderness and he was reaffirming our faith to let us know that there's going to be tests, there's going to be trials, but you can make it through it all. And so I want to encourage somebody today that you will make it through. You're going to not sit back and allow your test, your trials, the things that you're going through, the things that you're struggling with to be your end. This is the beginning of your story. I, I'm, I'm reminded that the Israelites, they wanted in the wilderness for how many years? Come on, Bible scholars. Is there anybody that can tap in on this this morning? The, the Israelites was in the wilderness. They were in the wilderness because of disobedience. But what, let me tell you something. God raised up Joshua. Joshua was the one that God used to allow the people to come into their promised land. But Joshua says something. In the book of Joshua 1 and 9, he says, be strong and of good courage. So I want you to know that this morning, he said, I've commanded you to be strong, to be of good courage. I want to encourage somebody out there this morning, be strong. I know it may look rough. I know that times are tough. I know that you're going through some things, but I'm telling you to be strong and be of good courage. As you are strong, as you're reminded who you are, remind, I want to remind somebody on the day that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I'm talking to some winners out there this morning. I need somebody to tap in real quick and just let me know that I'm winning. I'm winning in every area of my life. I'm winning on my job. I'm winning in my relationships. I'm winning on my family. Come on, can I get somebody to tap in this morning and let me know that you're winning? Diane, you got it. So the Israelites, they wanted for 40 years, but Joshua gave them uh, a commandment. He says, be strong and of good courage. So they were celebrating their wins together. They were celebrating every victory that God had allowed them to overcome. They had overcome the Israelites. They've overcome the Ishmaelites. They have overcome the, the Annihilites. They've come oh, all the Anites. They overcome them all. But God still gave them the victory. And I want you to know today, no matter what you're going through, the kids are acting up, God still gives you the victory. The light bill is due, but remember, God is still giving you the victory. You know, the dog has bit you. God is still giving you the victory. And I'm telling you, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're doing, no matter what you're going through, remember, you have the victory. And this is why I'm telling you that this week of resurrection, this is your week of hope to knowing that God is going to use you. God is going to manifest his works through you. And because you have come this far, 
because you are not sit back and waiting for tomorrow to come, but you're operating in your today. God wants to take what he has invested in you. He wants to manifest it. He wants to glorify it. He wants to illuminate it because there is more that God has put in you. I'm telling you today, I want you to be strong, be of good courage, and let's go forth. And I want to tell you something. There is power in the resurrection of hope. The Bible says, and I'm going to read this for you in Romans 6 and 4. It says, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism and death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. I want you to understand that there's a larger story to Easter. Easter is just not about eggs. It's just not about food. It's just not about family and friends, but it's about the resurrection that Christ died and we are buried together with him. So you are part of his DNA. You were not forgotten about. You was not born in the wrong family. You didn't have to go through uh, issues and trials and issues in your life all by yourself. Just know that you are in a new family. You're in the family of Christ. And as you in this family, as you're in what God has called you to be, I want you to know that there is something that we need to be anticipated to do. I'm I'm seeing myself uh, uh, reaching out to more souls. I'm seeing God using me in a different, in a mightier way. I'm seeing that you will be used by God. Don't sit there and think your life is insignificant. Don't sit there and think that you are less than. But God has a purpose for you, and this purpose is to cause you to manifest. It's causing you to grow. It's causing Causing you to be uh, uh, um, in a different place, but I'm telling you this morning, don't sit there. Don't allow another day to pass you by. If Christ was raised from the dead, we're talking about resurrection hope. I'm telling you, you can be raised. Come out of your situation. Come out of your, 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 your place of being stuck, and let's make a difference and to know that you are destined to win. Come on. Can I get somebody to say that with me? Say, I am destined to win. Come on, I need y'all to talk to me this morning. Just drop those words in the comment section. Say, I am destined to win. Listen, there's more to your story. I am destined to win. Listen, there's something good on the other side. I am destined to win. There, there's more to look forward to. I am destined to win. My story won't always be this way. I am destined to win. Listen, God is going to put the right people in my life. I am destined to win. It does not always have to be this way. Come on, somebody. I am destined to win. My story looks better. I am destined to win. And because God has been good to you, I want you to remember this. There's more to your story. And when you find yourself looking for uh, a, a solution, just remember that the Bible tells us in Philippians 3 and 14, it says, for I press toward the mark for the prize, for the high calling, which is in Jesus Christ. There's more that you're going to press for. There's more that you're pushing towards, and you're not going to allow your setbacks to be your setup, but it's only going to be the thing that's going to catapult you to your next. It's the thing that's going to be what's causing you to get to the next level. It's going to be the thing that's causing you to get on the other side. I am destined to win. Remember, Jesus' ministry did not start to after he was tempted, he was tried. So the thing that you are going through right now, remember, he was in the wilderness for 40 days. And in those 40 days, he was tested, he was tried, but he overcame. And my message to somebody out there this morning, you are being tested. You're going to be tried, but you will overcome. Can I get somebody to drop a comment? Say, I am an overcomer. Drop a, a, a throw your hands up this morning. Just say, I am an overcomer. Just let's glorify God this morning and just say, I am an overcomer. As he went through in the wilderness for 40 days, as the children of Israel, they walked around the wilderness for 40 years, but they came out. Christ rose again. And I'm telling you, 40 is your number of your purpose. 40 is the ending and the beginning. I mean, Noah was on the ark for 40 days and 40 
40 nights, there is something significant about your 40. And today I declare that your 40 is the beginning. It's the end of one cycle and it's the beginning of another. You are about to come out of this. You are about to get to the place that God has you. Your cycle is about to start all over again. You are about to start your new job. You're about to walk into your new home. You are about to get everything that God has given you. Just as I open up, share to you that there was somebody that I shared with them this morning. Don't look at things in the natural, but open your spiritual eyes to see that God has something more in store for you. When you start overcoming the, the battles that are presented with you every day, Remember, there's nothing that can come against you. There's no weapon that is formed against you that shall prosper. There's nothing in your life that will take you out because you are an overcomer. Listen, I'm going to let you guys get out of here this morning, but I just wanted to come and just drop a comment on this winning Wednesday. I want to encourage you to uplift you that there is more to your story. It does not end here. If Jesus can be in the wilderness for 40 days, being weak, being tired, being hungry, being tested, being tried, and he overcame, guess what? You can too, because you're an overcomer. If the children of Israel overcame so many obstacles, being in the wilderness for 40 years, but after 40 years, God still allowed them to go into their promise. But let me tell you something. You're not too old. It's not too late. There is more to your story. So 40 is your beginning. It's the ending. And one cycle of your life is closing out, but a new one is about to start. You're an overcomer. Guys, I'm going to let you go this morning, but I wanted to just drop this word on you this morning. And I want to encourage you this Sunday, on Resurrection Sunday, I want you to invite somebody to church. Get them into the house of the Lord. Do what you have to do. No matter what it takes, get them there. I have somebody coming all the way from from Orlando, which is about an hour away from Tampa. And I said, I'll make sure that I get you to church on Sunday morning. And guess what? They said, I'll be ready. And the same thing that I am sharing with them, I am trying to get people into the house of the Lord by any any time, any way necessary. And the same thing that God is doing, he'll do for you. So if you, if God has did anything for you, you need to help get somebody else so he can do the same thing for them. Listen, guys, I'm gonna let you get out of here, but I encourage all of you to let's sow a seed this morning. And I want to encourage you, let's take that 40 and use that as our uh, our symbol, our symbol this morning and tell God that this is the beginning of something new. It's the end of something old. And um, your seed, your giving this morning of 40 is going to be the beginning and the ending of a new chapter of your life. The Bible tells us in Luke 6 and 38, it says, give and it shall be given unto you. Remember, you're sowing into kingdom principles. You're sowing to a ministry that's helping to change somebody's life. You're sowing to make a difference. And as you're sowing your 40 this morning. Your $40 seed is an act of faith. And I'm telling you that once we look at Easter, I'm telling you it is a symbolizing of our trials, is a symbolizing of our victories, it's a symbolizing that we are overcome. So today I'm asking each and every one of you to get an offering today of $40. You can sow that seed this morning um, by going to the cash app. It's the money sign L-I-V-C church, or you can go to the website livcc.org. And as you're sowing that seed this morning, let's make a difference because this is your turnaround season. Listen, this is resurrection week. And as we understand that, as we look at everything that happened from one week to the next, all of the things that Christ had to go through, but he went through it for us. You can make a difference today, sowing your seed of $40. Let's make a difference. Let's get out of here. But let me pray for each and every one of you today. I'm praying for everyone that has been through anything in their life, but they are still here. I want to pray for you today that you are still um, dealing with some things in your life, but remind you that you are still here. It may not be perfect. You may not be where you want to be, but you are still here. Let's 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 pray before we get out of here. Father, we thank you for this um, segment of Winning Wednesday. We thank you for each and every one that is on here. Lord, I ask that you use them for your glory. Lord, allow them to be disciples that will be used for your glory. Lord, I ask today that as we understand in this holy week that we are recognizing what you did for us. Father, you, you you died, but in a few days you rose again. Father, you came up from the pits of hell and you came up with all power and glory. Father, the sting of death was no longer your portion because
because you overcame. And Father, because you overcame, we are overcoming. And we are overcoming in every area of our lives. There's no sickness. There's no fear. There's no doubt. That will be our portion. But Father, for everyone that is on here this morning, Lord, show them that they are to be used by you. Father, show them that they are called according to your purpose. Father, show them that they can be used for your glory. Let them go forth and know that this is just the beginning. Solathon was just a jump start to their ministry, and now their ministry will continue on, and they will continue to be the vessels that will be used by you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, I encourage all of you to go out, bring somebody into the house of the Lord with you this week. Don't sit back and not allow another moment to pass you by. You can be in the grocery store, the gas stations, on the sidewalk, but use your weapon, use your mouth, and, and bring somebody to, to know Jesus Christ. Listen, guys, I'm going to let you get out of here. I'm so excited about what's going to be taking place this week and what's going to be happening on this Resurrection Sunday. If you're in the Tampa Bay area, I encourage you to come to Living in Victory. We're going to have a power pack service at 11 a.m., and we're going to culminate with our friends and family day. It's going to be an Easter egg hunt for the children. It's going to be fun. It's going to be games, and we're just going to go all in and just talk about the goodness of the Lord and what God is doing. I'm going to let you guys go. I love you guys. I will see you this Saturday night on the prayer wall. If you got a prayer request, if you got a need that you want God to do, DM me your prayer request. Just drop it in the comment section and let me let me get your prayer request and we will pray for you on our live segment of the prayer wall every Saturday night at 8 p.m. Guys, love you. I'll see you this Saturday.